Hello and welcome to DirectX 11 Tutorial 9. In this tutorial we are going to focus on finishing initializing DirectX. Let's go to our graphics CPP. Now in our last tutorial we had made this class adapter data and adapter reader to get info about uh, the graphics cards installed on this computer. So what we are going to do is first we are going to make sure that we actually found one. So as long as if the size is less than one, so if we didn't find any, let's log an error. And we will return false. Otherwise, if they were found, you can put in code to determine which one you want to use. However, for this solution, I'm just going to use the first one I find for now. So we need to create our device and swap chain. So we go to D3D11, create device and swap chain, and we have all of these flags. So let's take a look at the documentation to decide what we are going to set each of these. All right, so the first flag is our adapter. So if we go back, we are going to pass in the pointer to that adapter. So our first adapter, we pass in the pointer to the adapter. All right, let's see the next flag. The next flag is the driver type. Now, if you were passing in null, for your IDXGI adapter, then you would pass in let's see driver type hardware. That's if you were passing in null for your adapter and just letting it decide. However, since we are actually specifying which adapter to use, we will pass in unknown. And unknown in DirectX doesn't mean necessarily that we don't know what it is. Unknown just means that it's unspecified. Next is uh, the handle to your module if you're using a software driver, which we are not. So we're just going to pass in null. Next is our flags. So let's take a look at the flags. Uh, the flags are for the runtime layers you can enable, and for now we are not going to do any of those. So I'm just going to pass in null. Next we have our uh, pointer to an array of feature levels. We are just going to set this to null. Not worry about that right now. Next we have the number of elements in our pointer to our feature levels, and we passed in null. So we'll just pass in zero. Next we have our SDK version. And for this, it says just to use D3D11 SDK version. Now we have a pointer to our swap chain description, which we have not set up yet. So I'm just going to put an address to SCD. That's what I'm going to call the swap chain description when we make it. After that, we have a pointer to the address of our swap chain. So in order to do that, we are going to look at our swap chain and we want the pointer to the address. So we will call get address of. Next, we have to do the same thing with our D3D11 device. The next is a pointer to the feature levels. I think this is the ones that are actually supported. Let's see. Yeah, so it returns a pointer to a D3D feature level, which represents the first element in the array of feature levels supported by the device. We don't need to determine which is supported, so we are just going to pass in null. And lastly, we have the address of our uh, device context. All right, so we have to set up our swap chain description in order to call this. And first thing I want to do is just zero the memory on this. 
All right, let's take a look at the swap chain description. So the first thing we have in the swap chain description is our buffer description. And that is of type uh, DXGI mode description. So let's take a look at that. All right, and we will have a width, a height, a refresh rate, a format, scan light ordering, and scaling. So let's set this up. For our buffer description, we know that the width is going to be equal to the uh, width parm that we pass in. And the same with the height, it's going to be equal to the height parm. The next thing we have is the refresh rate. Now we could go through and actually get the refresh rate for our outputs for our adapter, but I'm going to save that for a different tutorial. And for now, I'm just going to default the refresh rate to 60 hertz. So for the numerator, we would set it to 60, and the denominator would be 1. Now let's have a quick review on what the refresh rate actually does. If we have VSync turned off, then the refresh rate does nothing. If we have VSync turned on and the window is in windowed mode, then the refresh rate still does nothing. If we have VSync turned on and we have the application in full screen mode, like actual full screen, not borderless windowed mode, then the max refresh rate will be what we define here. All right, next we have our DXGI format. And if we take a look at the formats, there are all of these different options. We are going to use the RAGAPAAAUNORM because this is just um, 8 bits for red, green, blue, and alpha. Next we have the DXGI mode scan line order. If we take a look at this, we are just going to use the unspecified scan line order. Similarly with the last field for scaling, we are going to use the unspecified scaling. All right, so now to the next member of our swap chain description, the sample description. We have the number of multi-samples per pixel, and then we have the image quality level. So for the number of multi-samples, it defaults to one, and the image quality level, the higher the quality, the lower the performance, and it says the valid range is between 0 and 1 less than the value returned by check multi-sample quality levels. For right now, we are just going to initialize these to what should be supported by everything, which is a 0 quality level and 1 count. In the future, we will look at uh, fi finding what is supported by your graphics card. Next, we have the uh, DXGI usage, and this is how that how the CPU access and the surface access will work. We are just using this as a render target output, so we are going to use the DXGI usage render target output defined. Next is the number of buffers in the swap chain. So if we um, if we want, by default, uh, we'll, we will have double buffering if we just set it to one. So if you wanted triple buffering, you could set it to two, etc. We are just going to set it to one. Next is a handle to the output window. Next is a flag for if it is windowed. We are going to default it to windowed. Next is the DXGI swap effect. Now, we had discussed in the last tutorial that we are going to discard buffers after we present them. So we are using the DXGI swap effect discard. All right, and the last thing is the flags. And we are going to use the DXGI swap chain flag allow mode switch. And this will allow us to do things like switch between full screen and windowed mode and resize the window. Alright, so now everything should be set up for our swap chain. We need to make sure that we store the result. Let's 
see. Let's indent all of this. All right. If failed, HR. So let's give this a test and see if it is properly created. Okay, and we did not get an error, so it's safe to assume that the device and swap chain were properly created. The next thing we have to do is create our render target view. Now the render target view is going to be created from a function we call from the device. The first argument is a pointer to our back buffer, which we will go into that in just a second. For now, I'm just going to put in null pointer. The next argument is our render target view description, and we can actually pass in null for this. And the last argument is the address to the pointer for our render target view. So we can just call get address of to get that. So now we need to figure out how we are going to get this pointer to the back buffer. Well, we can get it from our swap chain, actually. We can call something called get buffer and pass in zero for the buffer slot, pass in the ID for a 2D texture, and then pass in the address of where we want to store the back buffer. If it fails, we are just locking the error, and if it doesn't fail, then it is now stored in, inside of this back buffer object. We can get the pointer by calling backbuffer.get. And then we can just add in some error checking. All right, we are almost done with this function. The only thing we have left to do is we have to set our render target. So in our device context, you're going to call om set render targets. The first argument is going to be the number of render targets, and we just have one render target. The next argument is going to be the uh, pointer to our array of render target views. We only have one, so we are just going to call the render target view dot get address of. And the last thing is the pointer to our depth stencil view. We do not currently have one, so we're just going to pass in null for this. And whenever we do implement one, we will pass it in there. So now that we have our graphics uh, or our, our DirectX initialized, we need to actually render something. Back in our graphics header, we need to create a function for rendering a frame. So we will call this render frame. And we're not going to return anything, so it will just be void for now. Let's create the definition for this. So the first thing we have to do is determine what our background color will be. So we are going to have the red value, uh, red, green, blue, and then the alpha. So our red value, let's say we just want it to be a bluish background. So we have zero for the red, zero for the green, one for the blue, and one for the alpha. Next, we have to clear our render target. And the way that we are going to do that is we're going to call clear render target view from our device context. We are going to pass in the pointer to our render target view. And we are going to pass in the array of our red, green, blue, and alpha values. All right, next we just need to present it. So on our swap chain, we are going to call present. And we are going to pass in for the flags, null. And then for the sync interval, if we want vsync to be on, we will pass in one. If we want it off, we will pass in zero. For now, I'm just going to pass in one. Now we need to go back to our source CPP. One thing that we will need to change is inside of our engine process messages in our render window process messages. 
So we had an if statement here for if peak message. We need to change this to actually be a while. And the reason for this is because we could have multiple messages in queue at once. And if we have the if statement, we might only process one of those messages when we call process messages instead of processing them all. The next thing we need to do is in our engine, we need to add a function for rendering. Let's create the definition. And we are just going to call graphics.renderFrame. So let's test this and see what we get. All right, we get a white window. So I forgot something. Okay, so what I had forgot was in our source CPP, after we call update, we need to render. That's why we didn't see anything. So if we test it again, we should see something this time. All right, there we go. We have a blue window. So that is all that we are going to cover for this tutorial. I'm not exactly sure what we will be doing for the next tutorial, but it will probably be initializing our pixel and vertex shaders.